Good morning, friends. It's a Langsor again, bringing you guys yet another build. This one is an interesting one. On many levels. Because it requires a specific playstyle. There's only one sort of order you have to play this, and can play this, really. You can tell it's the file Infernal Lock, right? The file Infernal Lock, so to speak. And the idea is really... We have everything converted to file. Or like, I mean, Kephonic Fisher does base file damage anyway. But... You see in the Ghost Flame, if you channel it for 1.1 second, it keeps channeling and giving you ward per second. While you can still run around, and this time you can cast the other stuff. But you have to play it like this, especially this is 250 corruption, I believe. As you can tell, I almost died there. So you have to be careful, and you have to cast the Ghost Flame pretty much consistently. You can cast it all the time. And it depends a lot on the enemies you face, so it's a little bit of more a difficult build. But as you can tell, it does a lot, and also the uh, fire skulls are great, doing a lot. So it has a combination of very interesting skills, basically when you... Actually, let, let me just explain to you how you do it. You run in, you cast your fissure, then you cast your ghost flame. Sometimes, like with this fire dude, you have to go into Profane Veil to dodge all the damage. If it's fine, you can just do this, and then you cast your... What are they called again? Hungering Souls, exactly. And with all the items for these things... See this fire phoenix guy does so much damage, it's crazy. So you gotta know the em enemies a little bit, but... It's the only way I could really make an Infernal Warlock happen at higher corruption. And it's actually not me. This is thanks to chat, of course. YouTube chat in this case, okay. See, if you don't pay attention and you don't cast the Ghost Flame, you die fast. fast. As I said, this is 235 corruption. Anyway, so it is strong, but you gotta know what you're doing, okay? John Sand from my great YouTube chat helped me building this up. So um, there we are. So what do we actually do? We need items as the following, right? We need definitely this one. Everyone should have this one. This is an easy, easy um, drop. Very simple. Um, <sighs> Necrotic damage leash as health is the key thing why I actually want it. Hungering souls projectors are fighting in a sequence and can all hit the same target. That is very powerful, but they do less damage. So we got to buff them. This is sort of the main idea of this thing. Also, we gain less spell mana cost implicit, that's great. But uh, the damage loss is kind of painful. But that you can all hit the same target is great. So you can really, like when you are at the boss, if you do bossing, you just um, cast your Ghost Flame and your Fissure. And then you can just stand there and keep hitting Q. So just keep spamming these skulls at them. And you can all hit the same target. So it's a lot of damage from that. It's pretty nice. That's what this does. Okay? Easy. Then we have the soul fire. Soul fire is obvious. It's about damage to ignited enemies. Like all we do is getting ignite stacks on enemies. It's all damage over time fire. Chance to ignite on hit with fire skills and necrotic skills. Fire damage if you have killed recently. Armor while ignited. Hungering souls base damage converted to fire. Soul fire is the one that makes these hungering souls into fire. And ignite on hit instead of possessing. Right? That's very simple. That's that's this thing, right? And it's just a lot, but you can't always use it, really. That's why we need the Ghost Flame to even survive to be able to use it. Sadly, the Fire Warlock um, has these restrictions, so to speak. Then we have the Telfoon's Mirage. This was also mentioned by John, great, great guy. And he said, because this helps you to survive, you get all the dodge rating and dodge changes and whatever, while channeling, which is basically... After 1.1 seconds, you can walk around and the Ghost Flame still channel, channel, channels, right? But you still gain all the dodge buffs. You can actually see this here, look at the dodge rating. If I cast it, it goes to 58, and after 1.1 seconds, it goes down to 19 for some reason. It gets less, I don't know why. But you still get more dodge chance, okay? You also can see down here, if we channel it, we gain ball per second. As you can tell, it goes up. Number goes up. And once it's done... It goes down again. That's what this does. And for this, we need the boots because they help us a lot. Telephone's Mirage. 
which I think is also pretty, pretty easy draw. The other one, obviously, is the Bone Clear and Barboot, which you really much, you kind of have to run it these days in the Warlock, or even in the Necromancer, because um, it gives you the much necessary ward to even survive, right? With the uncapped uh, necrotic resistance, which we of course have a lot. So plus all the other bonuses, which are nice. That's pretty neat. Now the Flames of Midnight, you don't really need. It's really not that necessary. I was playing around with it because of the fire pen and all that. I'm trying to make a build with the Wandering Spirits, but the Wandering Spirits are just not that good, sadly. Um, I still have it here because if you cast a fire skill, you create this one, then you can, with your weight, you can step into the spirit. Right, that's the spirit step. So in combat, this can give you a lot of mobility, right? An extra mobility skill, basically. That's what this does. That's the only benefit I get from it at this point. Um, it's not insane, but it's it's useful, okay? But you don't need it. That's absolutely not necessary. Everything else is health and fire damage, mana region. You want to have mana region wherever you can. And necro res, obviously, because that buffs all damage. Area is um, also great to make fissure bigger and decay threshold if you can. Intelligence is another one to scale. Um, poison res, endurance threshold, and damage over time. And of course, over here, mana region and fire damage maxed. You can also just, if you don't go for fire damage, you can also just go for spell damage. That works as well, because it's all spells fine idols we have this one you should have this if you have that's great 100 volt per second while channeling ghost flame is insane it's a lot it's really a lot and we have increased damage over time while you have an ailment overload we are creating this we're creating a lot of ignite stacks on the enemies so that's very powerful and in front of ambition more fire damage per stack of ambition more armor per stack of ambition and you get a stack of ambition when you hit a boss or an enemy which do a lot, obviously, right? So the Front of Ambition is great in this. It's a unique one, but it's it's very useful in the Fire Warlock. Blessings-wise, as you can tell, just put everything into gaining as much Necrotic Resistance as possible at 300 and everything else capped. Except the only thing was Shred Fire Resistance in the, the last one. If you get a higher roll, that's good. But shred, Shredding Fire Res is also pretty nice. Let's look at the skills. Of course, you have the Hungering Souls, right? And the key thing you want to have with these is as many souls as possible because they apply the ignite stacks. With this, your soul fire converts the possessed stuff um, into ignite. So you also do more damage over time with possessed. Oh no, it, they do it implicitly possess them so it turns into ignite and then you do more damage. That's how it works. You want to have this, extra projectiles. And you want to go up here, damage over time 100% and you want to have here extra projectiles. You want to have as many skulls as possible. I got this as well because I like kill threshold nodes. If a boss is under 15%, you just shoot your hungering souls at them and they're dead. And I also got this more caspi so you can spam them better. You also want to have one point into this because spell damage per 20 max mana on them is pretty nice. You lose projectiles but actually gain more damage, these fancy skulls. Then I gotta actually go on the other altar here. We have the Gephanic Fissure. Which is pretty much the same as always, because we also gain bu buffs for necrotic damage, right? This is why I didn't go fully into fire. Like for some of you who don't know, Gephanic Fisher does fire damage on the ground. This is when you stand on it. And the spirits that are released by it do necrotic damage. Okay, this is the torment. That is necrotic damage all the time. Like a curse. So f buffing fire damage in the Gephanic Fisher doesn't really do much. That's also why it says almost 3k damage. It's mostly pointless. We just want to have the Ignite stacks. Ignite is what we mostly want. That is the key thing. Also, we want to spread Ignite as much as possible. Tormenting enemies, Ignited enemies, spreads these stacks. And we, of course, want to go for Fire Resistance Shred. That's what we want. We don't go for these because that is all pointless. This gives him, like, initially more damage on the Fissure, but who cares? Um, it spreads ignite sacks. That is not bad, but it doesn't really do as much as I was as I thought it would be. And spell damage per two percent ignite chance. Cool. We want to have the torment damage though, mostly from the fissure. So this is why we go down here because this again torment deals more damage based on your uncapped necrotic resistance. 
and which we have a lot so this does a lot more damage so we want to apply ignite stacks and focus on torment damage with the fissure very simple i just realized this is why i had to cut it and this was actually the wrong one this was seeing a rib blood for some reason because i was playing around with it this has to be transplant i now have only 10 points in because i just respect but you basically go transplant is always the same you go up here maximizing the bone armor and then down here to the kill threshold um, and the haste and frenzy that's all you, you gain from it. it's always the same transplant is always the same for some reason i was was sitting on rib blood because i was playing around with chaos bolts casting rib blood but that's not it and we have profane veil classic um we go with in over here so all the ailments are changed to ignite per second so if you have any sort of damned this is turned to or even the slow is turned to ignite per second which is what we want this turns it into fire also gives it ignite chance and up here, the, these orbs, the profane orbs, are also um, turned into fire. That's even nicer. They do a lot of damage. And we go with the forked tongue, so you have two of them. And of course, duration. Profane veil, very simple. It's mostly an evasive skill. It also gets the penitent, penitence, penance curse on them. But it's mostly to dodge shit, right? So you can tell we really only have fissure and the hungering souls for our main damage. I mean, ghost flame does a lot of damage still, but from the ignite. All of it ignites, but then we just are busy evading shit. That's what we're doing, right? Now for the Ghost Friend. The key thing you want to have is this. Memorial of Flames. After 1.1 seconds, Ghost Friend detaches itself and persists for short duration without you needing to channel. That's what you see. You just keep channeling the Ghost Flame and then while clicking your, your move command. So after 1.1 seconds, you just keep move or start moving again. Then you know you can cast the other stuff. You want to have Ignite Chance 2%, obviously. You want to have this, Dodge Rating per Int. More Dodge Rating while Channeling, so you dodge more shit. And Current Mana into Ward gained while Channeling, that's pretty nice. It seeks out enemies, you don't really need this, but it's kind of nice. Burning Skull, and this one, you want to have one point in this. It lasts longer, it's almost 5 seconds then, I believe. So you can pretty much keep casting the Ghost Flame, but it has an upfront mana cost, so you run out of mana fast. You definitely need... At least two items with mana regen to fire this up. That's a ghost flame. Very, very simple, all of it, right? So again, you have a lot of defensive skills and only the fissure and the hungering souls really do damage, right? Because this is even a defensive skill. It creates a lot of ward. While it does all the damage, it creates a lot of ward and dodge rating, but it's mostly defensive. For the passives, I'm pretty much building the Echolite the same always now all in the armor and then into wall retention and resistances because that's very nice gives us a lot of damage we put five into the lich you don't really need it but i kind of like the spell damage leeches health it's pretty nice because we are high life build and warlock it's pretty much the same on this side of things as always we have five in the chaos flames just to get a little bit of fire damage and necrotic damage and over time and damage and damage and damage we put three four or five how many points you have open into this what you give threshold what gain on kill what per second while channeling that just keeps us alive and what you give threshold you need three in this for sure for the three point bonus for all the necro rats we gain more what you give threshold this is how we have so much ward this is nice because we're channeling a lot so we take less damage and we do more damage to them but it's pointless but we just take 10 percent less damage while we channel that's just pretty nice and what per second this is also health and armor yep and then you want to have this this whole thing here five points into damning people five points into igniting them then we go to the ashen one which gives us necrotic damage and elemental damage this also gives us an overload right this is the overload we were talking about earlier from our idol and this overload um also inflicts enemy enemies with witch fire for 12 seconds which deals necrotic and fire damage over time and then we can also go here in the grim hilly's domain and that witch fire inflict deals more damage per one percent global chance to ignite with fire skills and one percent per damned and we have a lot of ignite chance so this does a lot of damage and they also spread so this is the witch fire nice addition to the whole thing damage over time very simple and then here i always i got this earlier or like two builds ago i learned this from someone else this is actually very nice i never use it but it's very great this makes it just very fast so you can map faster or like run the echoes faster with this 
and it gives you haste. You are more evasive. Very useful. Very useful. This, this thing. And of course, in in vitality, nothing crazy. But this sort of witchfire thing also went eight into this because we get 104 ignite chance. So it's just setting people ablaze is the key thing with this build. Again, watch the gameplay demo in the beginning to understand how you play this because you have to play, as you saw because I died, you have to play the Ghost Flame all the time. Um, otherwise, you die very fast. And you have to sort of know what kind of enemies are charging towards you to know when you actually have to go into the Profane Veil vale to dodge damage. So it's, it's a little bit more of a difficult build, but it's a lot of fun because you can finally make these guys happen. Which are pretty bad in most builds, but with this, it's actually possible to make them do damage and be useful. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of this build, and I will see you guys in the next video.